Thanks again for everybody for tuning in. I am your host for tonight's call. My name is Jerry Goins. I am right out of North Carolina and uh, with this amazing company called Nove, we provide you with the education, the inspiration, and the opportunity to help you actually level up in life. And uh, tonight's call is your Tuesday night, how to get an 800 plus credit score call. Uh, so if you're tuning in live on the live line, I appreciate you. If you're tuning in to the live Zoom on novelive.com, that's L-I-V-E dot com, then shout out to you. And if you're live with me on Facebook, uh, just drop 800 down in the comment section so I know that y'all are rocking with me. And we're going to go ahead and get started. So uh, let's go ahead and do that now. Let me get my music down here. All right. That we all can hear me loud and clear. So first of all, we need to understand what is credit, okay? You need to understand what is credit because you can't have an 800 credit score if you don't know what credit is. Am I right? Am I wrong? Okay. Credit is the ability to access goods and services now, but pay for them later. Okay. Now, obviously we have to generate some kind of trust system so that way we know somebody's going to be able to pay later, right? All right, so well, FICO scores, they range from 300 to 850. The higher, the better, okay? They also have something called Vantage scores, and <clears throat> they can go up to like 900. But credit is how we buy land and property, how we buy vehicles, how we fund businesses, how we fund education, okay? Uh, how we fund health care. All right. How we fund our lifestyles, how we travel, et cetera. So credit, you can say, is, you know, the determinate the determining uh, number of how you how great of a lifestyle that you're going to live, because let's just face it, if you are able to just put everything on your credit card and travel using the points that you've accumulated on your credit card, you're gonna be able to travel to more places and live a more fulfilling lifestyle. Now, I know success, it depends on the person, right? But everybody has a desire to see more than outside of their window, okay? So that's just an example of how powerful credit is. And um, let's go ahead and get into why credit is so important for the community, because the higher the credit scores, the better the community. And I'm going to prove it to you right here. So better credit allows people to become homeowners. True, true. When you own your home, your taxes go to improve the area where you live. True. You're more likely to vote in elections and decide your leaders when you live and you bought that home in that place rather than, you know, somebody that's renting and don't plan to be around for a long time, right? So you're also um, someone that takes more pride in your community and your property. And that's where, you know, you have some home in some neighborhoods, they have HOAs. And that basically is like a contract that you have to sign that says, hey, you know, you're going to take care of your yard, going to take care of your house. You can't have a fence, but so high. It makes everything look nice and uniform, but you get to customize everything on the inside, right? But you still want to be able to understand that you're going to have lower crime rates in the areas and better schools where people have higher credit scores, okay? It's just how it is. You know, I don't know why it's like that. Well, actually, I do know why it's like that. But is it fair? Uh, that's a, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let I'm gonna let some of y'all decide that. Okay. But here's the cost of having poor credit. So we know what having great credit looks like. Let's look at what having poor credit looks like because poor credit keeps you from living the American dream. Forty-two million people have a score that's in the five hundreds or lower. All right, that's one in four people. That's crazy, right? So one in five have a mistake on their credit worth at least 50 points. Ooh, 50 points, geez. Now, bad credit can cost you 250,000 to a million dollars in higher interest and fees in your lifetime. You don't wanna be that person that just bought a home and they're end up paying for it three times by the time they could have just bought three other investment properties. I'll let that sink in for some of y'all. <laughs> um, poor credit can keep you from funding a business and getting the emergency funds that you need. I know a lot of people say you should have an emergency fund, right? But what if you just had emergency credit? Which one is easier to build, right? Think about it. Almost half of jobs check credit before making a hiring decision. That's so important. 
That's so important. What if you did not get that next level of that job that's going to pay you 30000 more per year because they checked your credit score and they were like, we're not hiring him, right? Isn't that crazy that they can do that? Well, they're doing it. They're doing it right now, as a matter of fact. So we need to know what makes up your credit score. We know now, you know, why we need a better credit score. We know the, the what it looks like to have a great credit score, and we know what it looks like to have a poor credit score. So what actually makes up your credit score? Let's take a look at that. So there's actually five different categories, and you start off with a FICO score of 300. So right out of the gate, everybody that's born has a 300 credit score to start off with, okay? So you never hear somebody having a 100 credit score. It's, it's not possible, okay? But now your payment history is going to be 35% or 192 points of your score. Okay, again, your payment history, that's 35% or 192 points of your score, making it the highest and most weighted category of your credit score. So missing payments is detrimental to your credit. Do not miss a payment. That's number one. Number two is credit utilization. Now that's 30% of your credit score or 165 points. Now I'll repeat that again for my people that's on the conference call. That's credit utilization. That's 30% of your score. And that's worth 165 points of your score. All right. So it's really important to know what credit utilization is. That's basically if you have a thousand dollar credit limit, you want to stay under $300. Okay. Cause that's 30% of a thousand. So don't go above $300 on your credit because it looks, you look desperate, okay? You look, you look thirsty on your credit. If you're maxing that thing out, that means, hey, I need the money. And if you need the money, then they're not gonna give you credit. It's crazy because they're gonna give you more credit the more you don't need it. Does that make sense? The more you don't need the credit, the more they give you. So if you need it all the time, you need if you're maxing out credit cards, then it looks like you might not be able to pay that back. You look very risky to the lenders and they're not going to give you more credit. So always keep that down. Now, number three is age of credit. That's worth 15% or about 82 points. Okay. So you can write that down age of credit, 15% or 82 points. All right. Now, age of credit just means, hey, you don't want to close cards. You know, you want to keep those open. It looks back to see how long you've been using credit. So if you're fresh out of high school, you know, you haven't been using credit long, then they don't really know how risky you are. So the longer you have on your credit, the further back your credit score goes, like somebody that has 20 years of proven credit history, they're going to look a lot better on paper to somebody that only has a few months. If you only have a few months of credit or nothing on your report at all, we call that a thin file and you're not going to get funded. You're not going to have a high credit score. OK, and even if you do have a high credit score, because maybe your other categories are really good, they're going to look at that thin file and they're going to say, well, you just don't have enough for us to judge how how well you're going to be able to repay this loan. You know, so it's really kind of crazy. It's like, you know, they, they, it's a give and take. It's a catch 22, you know. So let's look at the next thing, which is credit mix. That's 10 percent or 55 points. Again, credit mix is 10 percent or 55 points of your score. Credit mix, that they need to see different kinds of credit. And there's really two different kinds. Well, there's really four different kinds, but the main ones that we cover with you are revolving credit. That's like credit cards. And then we have installment credit. Okay, that's where you make one big purchase and then you're paying it off over time. Like a mortgage or a card note. You make that one purchase and then you're paying it off. They like to see a mix. You can't have great credit. You can't max out this category right here with just one kind of credit. So I know we've all been told to stay away from credit cards when we we're younger, you know, don't get it on credit. If you can't afford it, you know, on credit, then you don't need it. But how can they, the lenders know how well you handle credit and different kinds of credit if you don't never have it, right? So you, it's very important to have the different kinds of credit. You want to mix some things in there. They need to see a house payment in there. They need to see a car payment, some credit cards and things like that. Uh, new credit is number five. New credit is 10% of your credit score or 55 points. Again, new credit is 10% or 55 points. It weighs the same as your credit mix. With this, what they're looking at is how often are you out here looking for new credit? So that's where your inquiries come in. If you ever heard someone say, I need to get these inquiries off. 
or, or if you heard a lender say, you have too many inquiries, that's hurting your new credit. Okay, so it's a catch 22. You have to have these things to be able so that they can see that you're using your credit great. But then if you are out here inquiring too many times per month, then it looks bad. It's kind of crazy. It's a catch 22. I tell people all the time credit is a catch 22. You know, so you want to have some some of the some of the uh, bad helps you get some of the good. So you want to be. You want to be, you just want to leverage this thing the best you can. So you don't want to go out applying for new credit cards all the time. You don't want to go out and just apply for a car note all the time. And here's a tip. It's not even covered in the tips because I have some tips coming right now. But here's a tip for you go out and, and for those of you that are going out and getting a vehicle, you want to go like to your bank and get a pre-qualification. So that means that your bank is already giving you like $50,000 to go spend on a car. That means when you go to the car lot, you can show them this authorization or this pre sort of this pre authorization for 50K and they don't have to run your credit. Because if you let the car lot run your credit, they're going to run that thing till it's in the ground. Okay. They're going to, you're, a lot of people, uh, when we help people fix their credit, they come and they tell us, hey, you know, I applied for that car and man, I had like 12 inquiries because, hey, that person's in the background just going boom, 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 hitting that button and running your credit through all these different agencies to see who's going to get you this money so that they can get paid. They don't care that they just ruined your credit, you know? So 300 plus 50 plus 550 points equal a perfect credit score of 850. All right. So how do you increase your score? So now you know what's in it. How do you increase it? Let's go into some helpful tips, some strategies, and our secret weapon, which has helped over 60,000 people nationwide, okay? So first, you're going to check your credit report. So you can get a free credit report at annualcreditreport.com, okay? Again, that's annualcreditreport.com. Then you want to review the following. OK, so when you're looking at it, it's going to look like a bunch of gibberish, but you want to look at these specific things. You want to take a look at your revolving debt. So those are your credit cards. You want to take a look at and, and also store trade lines. You want to take a look at installment debt. So that's your car note, your house note. Take a look at charge offs. That's canceled debt. Take a look at collections. That's a debt that has been sold to a collection agency. Okay, and someone's trying to collect on that. It could also be collected on by a servicer. Uh, but in most cases, it's not the original person or the original entity that you took out the loan with. So you want to look out for those. Inquiries, any attempts to get new credit or validate your information. So it's important to differentiate a hard inquiry with a soft inquiry. A hard inquiry is where they're actually trying to, is, is you actually trying to get credit that's you actually trying to get money. A soft wing inquiry is where they're just trying to validate your information and check for like bankruptcies and things like that. But you're not actually applying for monies. OK, that's something like what they do when you first get utilities, something that they do when you get like a cell phone uh, and they check your credit score. You're not, you're not getting a loan from the cell phone company necessarily unless you're financing your phone. You're not getting a loan from the utility company either. So that will be called a soft inquiry. But if you go out and apply for that Visa, that MasterCard, the store credit, that would be a hard inquiry. Okay. Now, you also want to look for debt that doesn't belong to you. Remember, one in five have errors on their report. That can include a mistyping of your name. So maybe they mistype someone else's name and it looks like your name now and it's appearing on your credit report. What, what is this? I, I never lived here. You know, that's the kind of things that you want to look for. Let's get into some tips and tricks. So each tip is gonna help one or more of the five categories that we just covered. So number one is you're gonna ask for an increase. Okay, so you wanna to go to your credit card providers, right? So go to your credit card providers and you wanna ask for an increase, okay? So especially the ones that you may not use a lot because you don't wanna use that increase, okay? That's the, the, that's the biggest part of that tip is do not use this increase. This can also lead to, um, this can lead to an instant boost 
okay? But if you have negative payment history, then they're going to do an inquiry, right? Because, you know, to get more, <laughs> to get an increase, let me tell you, they're going to say, we are not going to do an inquiry on your credit. But let me tell you this, more than likely, they are lying to you, okay? <laughs> they're going to do an inquiry on your credit. And if you have negative payment history, you may not get that increase and you just wasted your time trying to get that increase on your credit cards. So you wanna know what your score is. You wanna go in there stronger than you did when you first got that card and you wanna make sure that you don't have any late payments and that your credit is actually better. So when they go and give you that increase, they're, not, they're running that inquiry and you're actually getting the increase instead of them running that inquiry and you're not getting the increase, now you have an inquiry. You know what I'm saying? So you want to look at that. So there's always some different things with that. You want to be careful, but that's the fastest way to get an instant boost to your credit. All right. So next is to get a secured credit card because some people don't have credit cards. Why? Because they don't have a good enough credit score to get it. Again, it's a catch 22. You need credit cards to get good credit. Well, how do you get credit cards if you don't have good credit? Ah, they Get a secured card. Okay. It's a great way to start out. Uh, I know a lot of people have opinions about secured credit cards, but you have to have the right one. Make sure that you have the right one. All right. So this can be helpful. And uh, for those that cannot get a credit card, but it usually doesn't report as strong as a normal card. And it can be hard to actually convert those over to normal credit cards or unsecured credit cards. OK, so you want to before you even get that secured card, you want to ask them, hey, how do I convert this later on down the line to you guys actually giving me a line of credit? And um, got some resources for you there as well. So stay tuned. We got some, some powerful resources for you. Now, another tip is do not close old credit cards. As I covered this earlier, this will actually increase your utilization ratio for the remaining accounts and lower your score. So how does it do that? Well, if you have a card that has like a $1,000 limit, and I'm just using round numbers. So if you have a card with a $1,000 limit on it and you close that card, well, now that $1,000 disappears from your overall available balance or your overall available credit. And so that means that any remaining uh, usage on the rest of your cards that you have, it's, that looks like it's taking up a bigger chunk of your overall available credit because it's all about percentages. So when you close that account, you chop off how much available credit you have and any outstanding credit that you're using just looks like it's taking up a bigger chunk, you know, and that is what is going to increase your utilization. Remember, I said you need to keep that below 30%, right? So don't close that old card. It also hurts because they're looking at your, your different accounts that you have. Remember, your credit mix is going to hurt there and it's going to hurt your age of credit, too because you might have had that card open for like 10 years and maybe you said, you know what, I don't need this anymore uh, or I lost it or I just am so tempted to spend it that I wanna make sure I don't. So I'm gonna go ahead and close it out. And now you just lost 10 years of your credit history. And that's gonna drop your score and it's harder to build that back up too. So don't close those out, okay? Next is become an authorized user. Asking your friend or relative to get added to their account that is in good standing is a good idea. The challenge here is that if they max their card out, okay, remember the utilization, they max their card out, it's going to hurt your score. And there's little you can do about it because it's not even your account, okay? It's even hard to get off of that bad boy. You know, they have to call in and say, hey, you can take them off now. I done messed his credit up enough. But it's also a very quick way, um, probably as quick as asking for an increase to get a better credit score. But the trick there is finding someone that's gonna add you onto their card. So it has to be usually like family members or something like that, brother, sister, um, mother, father, auntie, uncle, grandmother, grandfather, that kind of thing. Cause I know I'm not putting none of my friends on my, you know, saying, you gotta pay me, you know what I mean? All right, anyway, <laughs> moving on along. Let's go into more tips. So another tip would be to report your rent payments. So if you're renting, you're already living there. You might as well let these payments start to report to the credit bureaus. One of the downsides of renting is that there's absolutely no value after the fact. I like to do things that build me up later. When you're renting, you, as soon as that money goes into that landlord's account or that apartment complex's account, it disappears, okay? Only people that know about it are you and the apartment complex, okay? Or the landlord, okay? So when you are doing that, you're not building up any credit history. 
okay? Because there's, there's no history of you actually making those payments. But it can be difficult to find a trustworthy company to do that. So you want to be careful because some of these companies are scams and they charge you a big chunk up front and they don't actually do the work that they say they're going to do, you know? So that's that part, but it can help. It can definitely help. Another tip is to seek legal help. Okay. Credit and debt attorneys, they can actually sue the credit bureaus and the collection agencies on your behalf, but it can be expensive to do this too, unless, you know, they're going to work pro bono for you. But it often is the best thing to do because litigation is usually the last resort to actually get these credit companies to do what they are supposed to do and uh, and respect the rights that you have as a consumer. You have to understand that there's so many laws that are out here to protect you as a consumer, but you still have to know how to take advantage of those laws. OK, and the last but not least. One of the most effective things to do is just to dispute the negative items on your credit report. Now, writing dispute letters yourself, it can be time consuming. OK, that's obvious. Um, you know, you got things to do. You have family to take care of. You got job to work. You got business to run. So writing dispute letters and trying to figure out what needs to come off of your credit report, that's time consuming. And you may not know all your rights or what items that you need to challenge versus what items you need to leave alone. It would be really unfortunate for you to go ahead and try to dispute something that's about to fall off anyway, only to reset the debt clock on that statute of limitations. And now they can go ahead and start pursuing you again for another seven years. Okay. So um, other than that, Disputing items online, I know there's a lot of sites like Credit Karma and things like that, where you can actually pull up your credit report and start disputing things on your own, but you waive your right to, lit to further litigate when you do that. So you want to read the terms and conditions of actually filing that dispute online, because doing so, it waives your rights to further litigate and further get that removed if it comes up later, especially if it comes back on your report. Okay, that usually is what happen when, happens when you dispute these things online. So the number one secret to better credit, introducing Nove Money. Yes, y'all, Nove Money. Now, of course, this is in the sales presentation, but I just want to let you know what you all get with Nove Money. Nove just means new beginnings. So you put that in front of money, and there you go. It's a new, it's a fresh start for your money. It's an innovative solution. We offer a holistic approach to getting a better credit score. So a lot of companies, they just dispute things. And that's it. Well, there's five different categories. Okay, right? So they're just disputing things on your account. They're only affecting one or maybe two different categories. Our approach looks at all five categories and says, how can we help you get to the next score and get that 800? So we offer mailed for you dispute letters, an ongoing process every month, completely hands-free, okay? So you basically just get an email, you know, once a month that says, hey, these are the challenges that's been sent on your behalf. And then you get reports back from the credit bureaus directly to your mailbox. And all you do is just upload the responses back to Nove so that they know what to dispute next and they know what's been removed. How great is that? That's, that's brilliant. Man, this CEO of this company is a genius, I'll tell you. Now, it doesn't stop there. Like I mentioned, we have a holistic approach. So we also offer you a complete listing of the preferred, the most preferred primary trade lines and rent reporting. Now, we've already done our due diligence. We've already checked out the companies. We've already spoken with the people behind the companies. And we've already researched them to make sure that these are the best companies that are able to add these trade lines for you. Get this with no inquiries, okay? So you get to add a trade line, no inquiries. And most of these, you get guaranteed approval, okay? You don't even have to have a minimum income, all right? So we'll give you a list of those. You also get a, a list of preferred secured credit cards. Remember I said it's kind of hard to find those because some of them don't even actually report to all the credit bureaus. So you're doing all this work to build your credit and they're not even reporting to the credit bureaus. What point is that, right? So we give you a list of those. You also get access to credit and debt attorneys. Remember I said it's difficult to find and afford a good credit and debt attorney. Just use ours, free of charge, matter of fact. And when we settle and win that case for you, you get a settlement. You get 500 bucks per win or more. Okay, it just depends on what the situation is. So isn't that great? But it doesn't stop there. <laughs> but wait, there's more. We also get an online 
uh, budgeting tool that's going to help you find out where your money is going. That's going to help you balance your, your money even better because we know that credit and budgeting go hand in hand. They might, they might as well be sisters. All right. You're also going to get a debt manager. So that's going to help you get out of debt 75 times faster. It's going to show you how to snowball your debt and get out of credit card debt because we all know that compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. He who understands it earns it. He who doesn't understand it pays it okay you don't want to be the person paying compound interest on these credit cards so since it's a formula that got you into debt we're going to use a formula to get you out of debt and you don't have to put it all up here because it's all on the computer screen for you that way you can just access it put in all your information and it delivers the plan right to you all you have to do is follow it you also get a 27 page wealth manual to help you learn the different uh, definitions and concepts of building wealth and much, much more. Again, this isn't a sales call. I just want to let you know a little bit of the things that you can have um, in this unique package with Nove. So definitely want to get started today. Remember, knowledge is not power, okay? And I want you to put this in the comment section if you can. Knowledge is not power. Applied knowledge is power. I can sit under this tree all day long knowing everything that I know and still be shackled and chained. All I need to know is what I need to do, but I need to also apply it to truly be free. Okay. So use this information. Okay. I hope this has helped somebody out there. Somebody out there is going to get qualified for that mortgage on their dream home now. You know, somebody out there is going to get approved for that safer, reliable, and more efficient vehicle now. Somebody's going to get the ability to fully fund their business before they even open the doors or get capital that they need to expand in their business. And somebody's going to be able to save money by paying little to no interest ever again, thanks to having better credit. Ask the person sharing this, how do I get started? And they'll be able to help you to get your um credit portal started with Nove money. They'll be able to answer some of the questions that you may have about your credit. We even offer a consultation. So before we even purchase the product, you know, you can actually get a free consultation where one of our representatives will pull your report. Okay. So you get a consultation where they pull your report and they discuss the different items on your report for you. And then they give that to you and give you a game plan on getting a better uh, credit report. So how awesome is that? Everybody, I want to welcome you to Nove and the financial future that you deserve. Thank you so much for paying attention and staying tuned in. And I'll go ahead and let you go get back to your amazing night. Again, my name is Jerry Goins, one of the Nove leaders here from Wilmington, North Carolina, tuning out. Let's get those 800 credit scores, y'all. Peace out.